what I've done is I've framed this as a queuing problem. It's, with, with, it is a different way of looking at it. Uh, but operations researchers study queuing systems, and, and this is one of the things we're good at. So when you have a queuing system, you have customers and you have servers, and you're often interested in knowing how many customers are waiting in line and how long they're waiting, precisely because you want to improve the efficiency of the system. With uh, terrorism, you don't really know who the customers are. You have to discover them as opposed to if you're looking at transactions data from a call center or for, for, from an ATM on the internet or whatever, if you can't see individually who the customers are, at least you have a good sense as to how many are actually waiting in your phone tree or, or whatever it is. Okay, so that's a big difference. You have to find the customers. And then secondly, uh, in normal queuing models, when, when people drop out of waiting, drop out of waiting lines, that's, that's called reneging or abandoning, that's usually a bad thing. If, if, if someone you know, is waiting to, to talk to a business and they get tired of waiting because they're waiting too long, so they drop out, that's a lost sales opportunity, so that's a bad thing. Um, in, in terrorism, it's especially a bad thing because if, if a terrorist reneges from the system, uh, generally what it means is they've committed an attack. So what's going on here is there's this big race from the time a terror plot is conceptualized um, how much time will pass until the plot will actually be executed uh, as opposed to how much time will it take for a server, as it were, uh, to find the plot and detect it. In spite of the fact that everybody's very scared about terror attacks and we hear about it all the time, the actual risks are very, very low in this country. The actual number of attacks obviously have, have been very low, but if you go back and you look carefully at the data over the last 10 years of every single case where there's been uh, an indictment brought and then go back to the court proceedings and go to the undercover agent reports which, have, you know, which are no longer held uh, in secret, and try to uncover the dynamics of these things. How much time passes from you know when someone starts thinking about mounting an attack until there actually is one, uh, or until they're caught, uh, you put it all together and you come away with this picture that the actual number of plots out there that are in progress right now is probably not that great. You know, People seem to think that there could be hundreds or even thousands of terrorists just waiting to do something in the country. My analysis, again, it's pre-ISIS, but my analysis suggested that on average the number of terror plots you know, might be around three at any point in time, undetected plots. Uh, maybe is an upper limit five to seven, but not hundreds and, and, and not thousands. Um, part of, part of uh, the reason for this is that we actually catch most of them. Uh, and uh, I would say we're catching up upwards of 80% of all of the plots. And even the plots that we haven't caught, largely because most of these have been homegrown, uh, you have plots which actually evaded intelligence all the way till the end, and then it turned out that, that you know something went wrong in the plot. The message I would have is that we have in this country right now much much greater threats. Uh, you know, we lose many more people in car accidents. We even have probably more people who are struck by lightning <laughs> than we have people in this country who've died of terrorism. One thing that's important is to, is to make sure that the public is appropriately educated and you know we're in the midst of this election campaign and, and so it's, it's in the interest perhaps of some politicians to try and over inflate, over -inflate risks because it sort of lends to easier, easier campaign statements and, and by the way uh, I'd argue that the media is largely complicit in this as well because you know, for every million planes that land safely, there's not much of a news story there, but all of a sudden if something goes wrong, and, and in particular if there's an airplane crash, but even better from a media standpoint, if it was, you know, a plane is hijacked or something, uh, of course you'll hear about it forever. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I can go back to uh, some of the horrible events that have happened in the last year. We had you know, this terrible shooting in, in, in California, and it turns out that this does look ISIS-inspired. 
but how many people are dying due to gun violence, just purely domestic gun violence? How, how many school shootings have we had? These are things which are not terrorist related, but they're not terrorist related only in a formal sense of the term and that the people who are doing the school shootings apparently don't have political objectives, but, but they're killing people. Um, it, we, we should be investing resources to try and figure out how do we get ahead of people who might be in a position to do that and stopping them as well. And we should be worrying about that every bit as much as we're, we're worrying about terrorism. So I think a lot of this has to do with the public getting a, a, a better balancing of, of, uh, of risks and uh, from that maybe a better sense of, of uh, what our priorities ought to be. It is, it is and it isn't, of course. It depends who you're talking to. An, an economist would say, well, of course, what, what else would you expect? It's like anything else. We have socially efficient levels of traffic enforcement. We have socially efficient levels of, of just about anything. But, you know, a lot of what's going on with terrorism is, is, is the actual acts which kill people, and then there's the fear which is, which is generated, which sort of which sort of multiplies everything. And you could even go so far as to argue, and this, I don't mean to make light of a death, but the point is, you know, you might say that, you know, someone who dies of natural causes, okay, that's what's normally expected in life. Someone who dies in an accident before their time, that's tragic, but again, that's something which, is, which happens. Someone who is murdered by a terrorist is just, it just feels much, much worse. And the fear that multiplies from that is that there was nothing special about that person who died at the hands of a terrorist. The terrorist would have been equally happy to kill anybody just to try and make a statement in, in, you know, for his or her cause. Um, and so in, in some sense, not all deaths turn out to be equal in terms of the pain that they cause and, and the anger that they can arouse. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, so you might argue that the resources which are demanded should, should take that into account as well. After all, it's, we're, we're supposed to be reflecting the, the views of the public in, in trying to protect them. But still, having said that, I think that it is very easy to go overboard. And actually, if people better understand what the true risks are, then maybe the scariness behind it will, will not be as great. If you take a look at, 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 at the occurrence of terror attacks over the past many years, they really do look random. And one of the reasons why they look random is because they're not coordinated. This is the difference between having this sort of lone wolf versus uh, coordinated top-down command and control uh, type attack. Now, so how does ISIS change the equation? Well, uh, the argument would be that ISIS is not exhibiting any kind of command and control, but perhaps what's happening is it's finding more, uh, you know, it, 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 there, there, there are, there's an increased number of people who might be potentially willing to carry out such attacks, largely in response to ISIS propaganda, most of which may be online. Uh, and also, of course, there's the worry about people possibly coming back from the Middle East who have been involved with ISIS and having the capability to carry out such attacks. Um, but as long as it remains uncoordinated, uh, what you could end up with, with, you could end up with a slightly higher rate of attempts. Um, and so, you know, that, that just means that you might need more agents to keep track of uh, an increased threat. But it doesn't mean that the entire strategy uh, of how you detect things would, would necessarily change. Uh, you know, the focus, the focus geographically, the focus online of where you're looking, where you're putting your surveillance in, that can change. But the basic approach overall doesn't change. It, it's just, you know, you've got a higher rate. So it would be like saying if we're going to have more accidents, then we need more, more police enforcement on the highways, which is what you have around holidays, right? Whenever you expect that there's going to be a lot of drinking and driving, so you ramp it up to try and tamp it down.